My amour, and the rhythm is a play, my amour. Two big topics we want to talk about today. The first and most important is the Mavic Mini versus the Mavic Mini 2. But the second is about the Phantom 5 leak video that I released a couple of days ago. I've got some things I want to get off my chest. So let's talk drones. <music> As you know, one of my videos from a couple of weeks ago touches on the leak of the Mavic Mini 2. And so far out of all of the leaks that have happened this year with DJI, this seems to be the only one that's come to fruition in that somebody was able to go to Best Buy early purchase it before the actual official release of the Mini 2 and then take it home, do an unboxing and fly it. This is all before DJI officially announced that the Mavic Mini 2 was being released. So everybody's mind was relatively blown and for the first couple of days, everybody thought it was a fake video, but it turns out it was very much real. And now that the Mavic Mini 2 has been out, people have purchased it and they're able to compare it against the Mini 1. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Unfortunately, I don't have the Mini 2, so I don't have any hands-on comparison. The best that I can do is talk about the specs between the two drones and where we're gonna see some changes from the Mini 1 to the Mini 2. So, before we start comparing the two drones, we're gonna need a whiteboard, and I think that we have one right here. So, the first category I wanna talk about here is price. Now, more often than not, the newer drone is always going to be more expensive than the older drone, and that rings true here. The Mini 2 comes in at $499 for the baseline package. If you'd like to add the Fly More combo, that's an extra $100. That's gonna bump it up to $599, but Considering it's only 100 extra dollars, that is well worth the price tag. I would recommend if you've got $500 to spend on the Mini 2, you might as well just spend the extra 100 bucks and bring it up to 600 because it's going to make your flight experience out of the box that much better. Now, going back to the Mini 1, the current price tag on that is $399. If you want the fly more combo though, it's going to be an extra $100 as well, bringing it up to $499. Here's my take on this. Obviously we know that the Mini 2 is going to be more expensive than the Mini 1 for several different reasons that we'll get into here in just a couple minutes. But what I really wanna take away from this is the fact that the Mini 1 price tag is going to come down going into the holiday season for two reasons, the first being Black Friday. Obviously, they're going to cut the prices for Black Friday to encourage people to buy drones for their loved ones for the holidays that are coming up. The second reason, though, is because the Mini 2 is going to get more and more popular for reasons we're going to talk about in just a couple of minutes. That means the demand for the Mini 1 is going to go way down. And in order to move the units that have already been produced and are on shelves right now as far as the Mini 1 goes, they're going to have to cut the price to make it more appealing because at this point, if you just spend the extra $100, you can get the Mini 2 with a lot of upgraded features to it. It makes a lot more sense to just go ahead and do that rather than settle for the Mini 1 that has decent specs but overall can't compare. I would look for the next couple of months to reveal a new price on the Mini 1. I'm estimating anywhere between $200 and $250. So if you really want a drone but you don't want to spend more than three, 400 bucks for one, you want to bring it down as low as you can, maybe wait until December or January to go out and purchase the Mini 1. It's still a really solid entry-level drone, but it just doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the Mini 2 has. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about sensor size. So the sensor remains totally unchanged from the Mini 1 to the Mini 2. We've got a half-inch CMOS sensor in the Mini 1, as well as a half-inch CMOS sensor in the Mini 2, and they're both capable of taking 12 megapixel photos. So largely the photos that the Mini 2 is taking are going to remain unchanged from the Mini 1. You're not gonna see a huge difference in the quality of those photos, so this one is a complete draw. But the first big win, in my opinion, for the Mini 2 is in video resolution. So the Mini 1 can shoot in 2.7K at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. It can also shoot in 1080p at 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. The Mini 2 takes a big step up by adding the one thing that drone pilots were just 
itching for with the Mini 1, and that's 4K video resolution. The Mini 2 can shoot 4K at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. Pretty standard. Where I'm a little disappointed in the Mini 2 and the upgraded specs is that they didn't add an increased frame rate for the lower resolutions. At 2.7K, the Mini 2 can shoot at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, and at 1080p, you guessed it, 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. Where this is confusing to me is, I would have thought at the very least they would have added 120 frames per second to the 1080p option to add that slow-mo feature. If not that, at least add 50 or 60 frames per second in the 2.7K resolution to give it just a little bit more versatility. I think it fell just a bit short when it comes to frame rate, and I don't think that's going to really affect things in the grand scheme, like I said, people are just going to be excited that the Mini 2 can shoot in 4K because that was one big gripe with the Mini 1 is you bothered with 2.7K, why not just bump it to 4K? Regardless of whether or not they added the increased frame rate, the Mini 2 still gets a big check in this box versus the Mini 1 with that 4K resolution. Let's move on to bitrate where I believe the Mini 2 wins very big. So for those of you that might not understand totally how bitrate influences the camera on your drone, when you're shooting video, if you have a higher bitrate, that camera is able to take in more information from the images that you're capturing as it's processing the video, which leads to a clearer, crisper picture when it relates to the frames within that video file. If you have a lower bit rate, it's not capable of processing all of that information at a very high speed, so you lose detail and quality on the images within that video file. In this case, the Mavic Mini 2 wins giant. It comes in at 100 megabits per second. So you might be asking, well, what was the Mini 1? 40. 40 megabits per second. Now, the video quality coming out of the Mini 1 was nothing to scoff at. In fact, I've flown the Mini 1 several times and I really actually like the picture quality that comes out of that camera. It's very, very solid for what that drone is intended to be. But the Mini 2 steps it up big time with 100 megabits per second, and I am very anxious to see the quality of video that comes out of the Mini 2. In fact, to give you some scale as to how much of an improvement this is for the Mini 2, the Mavic 2 Pro's bitrate in the Hasselblad camera is 120 megabits per second. That's pretty good. And then you consider that the Mavic Mini 2 has 100 megabits per second, just 20 megabits per second less than the Mavic 2 Pro, it's extremely impressive for an entry-level drone. So again, big check mark going to the Mavic Mini 2 on this one. It really outdid itself in its ability to process video as it's being shot. Now, the Mavic Mini 2 won the competition big against the Mavic Mini 1 for several reasons, but the biggest, in my opinion, are its ability to shoot 4K video and to process that information as it's coming in while it's shooting video to get a much crisper video clip. It's going to be far and beyond what the Mavic Mini 1 can do. So that is today's big winner in the comparison. However, there are a few more specs I wanted to talk about with the Mavic Mini 2 that don't necessarily need to be compared to the Mavic Mini 1 because they're clear victories. Well, I should say most of them are clear victories. There's one complaint I have besides not increasing the frame rate on the lower resolution modes for the video on the Mavic Mini 2, but we'll get to that in just one moment. Let's talk about the good first. So the other feature that they added to the Mavic Mini 2 is the ability to zoom. Previously, the Mavic Mini did not have zoom capabilities, but the Mavic Mini 2 is able to zoom two times in 4K and four times in 1080p. The only caveat with this is that it is a digital zoom, so you are going to lose image quality when you zoom in while using the Mavic Mini 2. To give you an idea of the difference between a mechanical zoom and a digital zoom, a mechanical zoom is able to focus in on a particular subject or area within an image and not lose quality because you're actually changing the way that the lens sees the image. When it comes to digital zoom, all you're doing is taking the image that the camera can see and blowing the pixels that already exist up. So you're losing quality by blowing those pixels up because you're losing information as you're blowing out the image. 
However, I don't think that's going to be a giant problem for the Mavic Mini 2 because the zoom is so low on both modes that you're really not going to see much of a difference in video quality even when you zoom in. I don't think it's going to throw a lot of people off, especially since, again, they're going to be focused on the fact that they can shoot in 4K now. The other two things I wanted to talk about that benefit the Mavic Mini 2 are first, the implementation of OcuSync 2.0. This was a giant victory for the Mavic Mini 2. The Mavic Mini 1 used an enhanced Wi-Fi signal, which was really, really good at the time, and especially for what is supposed to be an entry-level low-maintenance drone. Adding OcuSync 2.0 brings the Mavic Mini 2's level up and makes it closer to an actual professional grade drone that you could use for any commercial project. Not because the camera quality is that much better, but because now you have a much more reliable signal. This will allow you to get more long form content, whether it's panning backwards from a subject while shooting a video, or just being able to get in just the right spot in a very busy, high traffic area to get that perfect picture. And something I wanted to address too is when you talk about the range of a drone, a lot of people think, oh, it can go this far. That is true in perfect conditions. And let's face it, most of us have broken the rule of maintaining visual line of sight because one of the first things you do when you get one of these high-end drones that has GPS capabilities is push it as far as it can absolutely go. So most of us have broken that rule. If you're not admitting that, I'm gonna call you a liar. But what you should really be seeing this as is not so much a reason to go out and beyond visual line of sight. In fact, I discourage that as a drone professional. How I see the increased range is just a more reliable signal as it relates to shooting in high traffic areas. So when there's a lot of interference, especially in a city like Lancaster, where we have a couple of tall buildings, we've got lots of Wi-Fi signals, and a lot of metal structures that might influence the signal between my controller and the drone, having that added security of a very stable connection makes me feel better about flying in that area. Now, nine chances out of 10, when that drone loses signal, it's just going to go into return to home mode and come back to me safely, but you never really want to leave anything up to chance. I always like to have control over my drone, so having an increased signal strength with OcuSync 2.0 is going to benefit Mavic Mini 2 pilots greatly. The other big improvement that is going to hopefully alleviate an issue that the Mavic Mini 1 had a lot is the increased wind resistance. The Mavic Mini 2 has a level 5 wind resistance versus the Mavic Mini 1's level 4. What does this mean? This means that DJI put in stronger motors to help the Mavic Mini 2 fight the winds at higher elevations and on windier days. If you remember, the Mavic Mini 1's big problem besides not having a 4K camera was being blown away by strong winds when people would get up into the 150, 200, 300, 400 foot range. And this was a big problem for a lot of pilots. They would push the drone too hard and the winds would take it away and they'd never find it again. Which was super inconvenient because even though the Mavic Mini is very affordable, it's still $400 and if it blows away with the wind, it's not gonna feel good. So hopefully those stronger motors will help the Mavic Mini 2 to alleviate the flyaway issues that the Mavic Mini 1 had, only time will tell. It's still a sub 250 gram drone. So that means it's still going to be susceptible to high winds, but it will at least have a fighting chance, maybe in that 150 to 200 foot range and on windier days with that increased motor strength. Now, the bad. The only other thing that I was disappointed in with the Mavic Mini 2, aside from not increasing the frame rate capabilities of the lower video resolutions, was the lack of obstacle avoidance sensors. I understand why they couldn't put those in. The reason was they were trying to stay true to what the original intention of the Mavic Mini series was. It's an entry level, low maintenance drone that's under 250 grams so that people that are flying in the United States don't have to register their drone with the FAA. If you didn't know, anything that's 250 grams or more is required to be registered with the FAA. The Mavic Mini was 249 grams and the Mavic Mini 2 maintains that weight of 249 grams, so it does not need to be registered with the FAA as long as you're flying it recreationally. Commercially is a completely different story. If you plan on flying your Mavic Mini 2 or Mavic Mini 1 commercially for money or for the benefit of a business, you're going to have to register it regardless of the weight. But back to the obstacle avoidance disappointment, I think that if they're able to develop the technology in the future to add those sensors without adding a tremendous amount of weight, that DJI is going to do 
do a huge service to the entry-level drone pilot. Because while those entry-level drone pilots should be trying to learn how to fly their drone without those training wheels in the form of obstacle avoidance sensors, we all understand that accidents happen. And sometimes those sensors can be the difference between escaping something that could have been terrible or spending another five, six, seven hundred dollars on either a repair to your drone or a brand new drone in general. I think at the very least, DJI should have considered at least adding rear obstacle avoidance because at least forward, people can sort of see what's going on, what's in front of them. But when people are trying to pan backward with their drone, there are sometimes interesting scenarios where something might appear behind you or you might not be accounting for how far something is behind you. And and you need that sort of stop on the brakes so that the drone doesn't fly backwards into an obstacle or even a wall. So that's about it for my conversation about the Mavic Mini 2. Please leave your thoughts, feelings, any information you have about the Mavic Mini 2, whether you purchased it or not, down in the comments below. I'm very interested to hear from you and hear what you have to say about this really intriguing new little drone. Remember, the Mavic Mini series was intended to be an entry level, low maintenance drone, and that's what it will continue to be. I have a firm belief in that. I don't know how advanced they'll be able to get with the Mavic Mini series, but I know they'll push the envelope as far as they can without sacrificing the whole purpose of designing the Mavic Mini. So moving on, I have one last thing I wanna talk about. This one's gonna be real quick because I don't wanna to preach to you guys, and I saved it for the end of the video because in my Phantom 5 video, I got an extremely negative response from many, many people. Some of it was constructive. I had a lot of people tell me, hey, you took way too long to get to the point. And they did that in a variety of different ways, whether it was kind or unkind. The message was loud and clear. I rambled on a little bit too much in the beginning of the video. So for those of you that were very constructive with your criticism, Thank you. You are the people that make me better and I greatly appreciate your feedback, especially when it's done in such a constructive way. I will do better in the future with just getting to the point as I hope that I did today. But the other thing I wanted to talk about as it relates to the Phantom 5 leak video is just some very plain unkind things that were said about me and what my intentions are with YouTube. Just a couple of days ago, a really bad taste was left in my mouth. I posted the video and as you know, if you're familiar with my content, if you enjoy my sense of humor, I find irony in posting clickbaity thumbnails. I don't do it to actually get people to click. I do it because it's funny and honestly, I have a lot of fun creating them. But somebody read that the wrong way and that's happened before. I'm not any stranger to somebody going, no, oh, that's clickbait. Why are you bothering me with this? That's happened plenty to me while I've been releasing videos. I just brush those off. What bothered me was this person left a comment that said something along the lines of, everybody wants to be famous. That really bothered me for a couple of different reasons. First off, I'm not here to get famous. I'm here because I love creating video content and I love talking about and flying drones. That's something I really love to do. And my whole intention with YouTube was not to chase fame or become some sort of face of the drone community. That's not what I want at all. That just comes with the territory. What I'm trying to do is take what I love to do and make it my full-time job. I love providing commentary. I love speculating. I love discussing possibilities, ideas, whether they're fact, fiction, whatever the case may be. I never claim anything to be true unless I know it's true. And I never try to pass anything fake off as true because I feel that that is entirely wrong. Everything I do, if it's not factually based, is purely speculation. And if you take my word as the truth, unless I state that this is the truth, here are the facts and this is where I found them, always take what I say with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, I am just a commentator. All I'm doing is giving my take and whether you like it or not, that's what it is. Anyway guys, no more heavy. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We are on the quest to 1,000 subscribers and I'm not gonna stop reminding you, I keep telling you this until we get there. So if you have already hit the subscribe button, tell a friend to come and hit the subscribe button and then tell them to tell two friends and them to tell two friends and so on and so forth and we'll be there in just about no time. Also, something I wanted to talk about that I haven't started doing until the Phantom 5 video, which 
we all know didn't do very well, is my Instagram page. I have a pretty healthy following on Instagram and I'd like to add you to it if you're not already a part of it. Make sure you check out my Instagram. I'm gonna link it down in the description below. Go ahead and go to my page, check out some of my photos and follow me if you would. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers on Instagram as well and once we get there, they don't know this yet, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. We're gonna give away a drone, a DJI drone nonetheless. Which one? I'm not sure, it really depends upon where we're at and what we can do and how flexible we are, but I'm gonna make sure it's a good DJI drone. You're not gonna get stuck with a Tello for taking the time to follow my page. We'll figure it out, we'll figure out which drone we're gonna give away and we'll do it. But first, we have to get to a thousand followers on Instagram. Until we get there, the giveaway's not happening. So go to my Instagram, hit that follow button. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the subscriber shout out. Now again, we've already dwelled on the the fact that the Phantom 5 video was pretty much a flop. So I wanna redo the subscriber shout out from that video, and then we'll start with new shout outs in the next video. So, Drone Syndrome. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And Drone Syndrome is sort of special to me as a friend and as a follower because he's been with me since the beginning of my drone journey. He followed me on Instagram, he followed me on YouTube, and we maintain a pretty healthy line of communication. We've really become pretty close friends as it relates to drones in the drone community. So it's been a great time getting to know him and watching him grow as well as having him watch me grow. And his support has been just incredible. But you should really check out his YouTube channel. He's got an awesome YouTube channel and what's great about Drone Syndrome is he doesn't just focus on DJI. In other words, he's not a DJI fanboy like some people. <coughs> So he actually talks about many, many different varieties of drones, many different drone companies, and he also expands out into other tech as well. He talks about video tech, he talks about audio tech, he does a lot of how-tos, a lot of film sample from different drones and different cameras. He does a lot of product tests, you get the picture. He's got anything you could ever ask for as it relates to drones, video, and other tech equipment. Check him out on YouTube, Drone Syndrome, and check him out on Instagram too, Drone Syndrome underscore official, Drone Syndrome. Thank you, my friend, for continuing to support our journey. It means a lot to us. This is your second reminder, if you haven't already, to hit that subscribe button down below. And remember to tell a friend, whether you have or you haven't at this point, tell them to come here, hit that subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated. Until next time, guys, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. Don't be a Peace! Don't be a dick! Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick.